Once we have our formatted chart, we can now start putting the infographic together, which is going to combine our chart with some images and text. And in this example for presenting, I'm just going to make use of slides, which is very much like PowerPoint. Uh, you could also use Publisher. So I've just copied and pasted my chart over here. Uh, the other thing that this infographic uses is a map of the world. So I'm just going to search for a map of Africa. I'm just going to use the snipping tool to take uh, a picture of just the portion of the screen that I want for the map. So I'm just going to take this bit here and include the smaller islands off the coast of Africa. So once I have that, that's already in the clipboard and I can paste it into my slide and then decide how that's going to be positioned. The other example that we had in uh, the infographic that we started with, the model that we started with, was to have uh, pictures of um, teeth to represent how many were uh, bad in various countries. And so we need a separate graphic for that, which is going to sit over our map. And the graphic for that is a tooth. I'm going to get hold of that graphic by using Pixabay, which has vector images or images that we can use in our presentations and they're copyright free. We're going to make use of this image here. And we're going to copy this image and load it into a, 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 a paint program so that we can color different portions of the image in to represent a half or a whole tooth as being decayed. So I'm going to download this image and then uh, in a folder where I can find it again easily. And now we're going to make some changes to this image and I'm going to use another program which is available online which is Pixlr and we're going to use the editor. I'm going to upload the image into the editor so that we can make some changes to it and then I'm going to save various versions of it. So the editor is the one we want so I'm just going to launch the web app and what's good about using something like this is it will work on whatever kind of computer you have because it just requires the web and I'm going to open an image from my computer there's the image and it's a, a nice small tooth and so I'm going to just uh, color in maybe uh, a third of it or what I think represents the closest to a third of the tooth uh, so that I can show countries with uh, 2.3 teeth uh, that are decayed. So I'm going to use the pencil tool to just draw some lines across here and then color that in black. So if I just move this down here, here's the pencil tool. And when I select that, it gives me the option of changing things to do with the pencil. So I'm going to just make that nice and big and draw a line across these two carefully. And I can now get my fill bucket and color those in. Uh, so if you want to be really, uh, well, uh, the student should be really um, meticulous, then they can use the pencil and uh, tool to color in some of the lines or some of the pixels which haven't completely uh, been colored in. Uh, so we're going to save this image and I'll give it a meaningful name so I can use it. So something like a third of a tooth. And it's going to download with a transparent background, which means that only the tooth part will show. And when I move it over a different image, it won't have a, a rectangular white box around it. So these, che these checkered boxes 
uh, stand for uh, transparency. And so the format it, it uh, reverts to by default is PNG, and that's the format we want to keep it as. Uh, so the next thing is I need a half, and so I'll maybe try and work out half of a tooth and again color that in using my fill bucket. Uh, so the other thing to note about an application like this is if you do something wrong, the undo uh, control Z works and it will undo as many of your last actions as it has on record. So you can undo lots and lots. Um, and I'll just save this particular one as well as representing half a tooth. And then the last one, I'll just fill the whole thing in, in black. And this will represent a whole bad tooth. So we'll save this. And the reason you can do this quite quickly is if you have a model of what the end product needs to look like, then changing your images to match that is uh, nice and straightforward. So back on my infographic screen here, I'm going to insert those three images of the teeth. And depending on which software you're using, uh, that varies slightly. But we're just going to insert the, the images uh, on top of the presentation here. So now it's just a matter of looking at our data and matching it up to uh, meet the number of teeth that we require. So one nice trick about using something like this is if, if there's a country with, let's say, four bad teeth, then you can hold down control while uh, one of the images is selected. And by holding down control, if I now click and drag, it makes a second copy of that and it makes a third copy of that and then it'll make a fourth copy of that. So I now have four of these images and again holding down control allows me to select all of them in one go and then I can pick them up and place them on top of the country that's required. Okay, so, and, and we would make sure that they're all the, the same size. Uh, and, uh, and the rest of it is just about adding the required text. And it's always good when you're making an infographic for the first time is to have some model of what it's going to look like. Uh, so, uh, and, and what makes an effective infographic. So we've got some graphics here. We've got the map and we've got the, uh, icons for the teeth. Uh, we've got a key to show what each of those mean. We've got some text explaining the best and, uh, uh, um, things which aren't highlighted uh, especially there. We've got uh, some links which talk about where the data's come from and we acknowledge where the images come from and we've got links back to those. Uh, we've got some headlines and we've got our chart uh, and then we've got some explanation of that. So what would make this even better is at the moment the chart and the graphics represented here are exactly the same. Uh, but what would make it even better would be to have the chart representing different countries to the countries that were being represented by these graphics here. And that concludes these three videos on infographics, how to create them using different software and real-world data.